G'day everybody, Nick Dingle here again for another Microsoft Word tutorial, this time looking at formatting pictures and different things you can do with the format tab at the top. So what we're going to look at right now is you can see I've still got two images and we're going to look at moving these photos around. Very simple process to move photos, it's just a matter of selecting your photo with the left click of the mouse, clicking with the left mouse button and dragging that photo wherever you would like it to be. Now you will notice that it's pretty rigid, it's pretty limited really in what you can do. I can't really drag the photo next to this one because it's too big. I can't really drag it on top. You can see it pops up the top there. Okay. And you can see I can't drag the photo sort of in the middle of the page. So it's pretty rigid at the moment. And that's because of the layout options. And we're going to look at them in just a moment. But right now, I want to show you a quick way of aligning your photo. So right now, this photo, I can't move him at all. He is filling up the entirety of the page. So I'm going to ignore my red water bird for a moment. And we're going to look at Mr. Hamster down here. You can see he's taking up barely any space. So by default, he is set to the left-hand side of the page and you can't drag him over. So what the quickest way to move him over is to use the text alignment buttons up here. The left, middle, and the right buttons. How easy is that? Just click on the photo and then click on the alignment that you would like to use. And that's it. Okay. So, that aside, there is a lot more advanced ways that you can do this. I'm going to demonstrate this down here. I've got a picture of the Word logo, and I'm going to show you different layout options. Now, I want to quickly just tell you the layout options are exactly the same as wrap text. Okay. So, on the format tab, there is a wrap text button. These are the same as the layout options. So I'm just going to stick with the layout options here. By default, it is set to inline with text. And inline means that it acts like a piece of text. So if I drag him across the sentence, you can see he's sitting in the middle of the sentence. If I drag him down the paragraph, he's sitting in the middle of the paragraph. It's really weird, actually, and I rarely use photos in this way. The probably more obvious way if you're writing documents or things like that is going to be using square, one of these three actually, but square to start with. As you can see, it already looks better. It tries to wrap the text around the photo and I think it looks great. So this is what you would probably use if you're a journal, a journalist I should say, and you put it up in the right hand corner and all of a sudden you've got your text wrapping around it. You can put a caption down here which says best logo ever, things like that. Now there's more options, so let's quickly talk about them. That is square. The next one is called tight, similar to square, but this space around the photo is going to be minimized. As you can see, bloop, it tries to push the words around it as closely as possible. Okay, so very similar to square, it's just less spacing. The third one is similar again, but if you have a look closely at the icon, it shows words underneath this loop. What through does is all the see-through parts of the photo. So for instance, if I go back to square, it's very literally square. These parts around here, these angled parts and these parts over here are actually see-through on my photo. So if you use through, it's actually going to put words in the see-through parts of the photos. You can see it's wrapping up here and down here and down there. So that might be good in instances. It's a little bit weird in some parts because you can see it puts words up in the top right hand corner there but anyway the more interesting options i would say are down here top and bottom so the photo is literally in the center so i would use that for if you have a diagram if you have something similar to that but then again you can use inline with text and center things like I'd, it doesn't make sense to me that you would use something else you could just do that and things are a lot more rigid easy to use but anyway that's top and bottom is that one there something a bit different the next two I use all the bloody time this is behind text and in front of text if you ever want a photo behind things or in front of things and this allows you to overlap photos as well so if you click on behind text it does literally just that it sits behind the text now, don't ever use this method for putting like the word draft or things like that. That's called a watermark and we can do that other ways. But these things, it makes the photo really, really malleable. It can move around. It's very, it's not very rigid anymore. It may not be useful when you're using it with text. However, if I scroll up to my Mr. Hamster, he becomes very useful 
when I want to overlap photos. And those are your line layout options, I should be saying. And that's a really good way to work things. I suggest you try out each one and just for yourself, get some lorem ipsum text, that's what all this crap is. Get a photo and try it out. Just see the different layout options and how they work. So again, the actual formatting tab itself is hidden by default. You have to select a photo to make this picture tools appear. Click on it and you've got a slew of things that you can use. So realistically, let's start left to right and work our way through some of the tools. I'm not going to focus on all of them. I am just going to mention some of them briefly. So remove background is quite interesting. It tries to guess what the background color is and remove it. And if we click on it, it's going to bring up another tab that you can use. So select your photo, select remove background. All right. And what it's done here is it's tried to guess what the background is. You can see all this purple stuff is what it's going to remove and all the colored stuff is what it's going to keep. Now I can change how much it's going to keep and remove so I can resize this a little bit. But you can see we start to lose a bit of the detail. Down here that's going to be annoying to try and remove. So what I'm going to do, whoop, yep, just click a few undos, we're back to where we begin, is we can actually delete and add different areas within this photo. So if we wanted to keep a little bit of this photo, you select keep areas or mark areas to keep, I mean. I'm going to zoom in using this toolbar down the bottom. Whoop. And you can see he's removed a little bit of his tail. Let's see if we can add him back in. Yep. Click down here. Let's add in some of the tree again. Add in there. Add in up here. That's pretty good. That's done all right, that one there. And you can see I need to remove a little bit there. Some and all this, obviously. And then some in between the twig and his tail there. So I'm going to click mark areas to remove. Click on the blue sky. It removes most of it. Let's just get rid of those tiny bits. Click there. Yep, click there. Ooh, see it removed a fair bit. It's not doing too bad. Click there. And let's add in a few. It's removed his beak, so let's bring his beak back in there. The twig. No, it hasn't done much there. Ooh, I think I'm making it worse. Nah, let's leave it at that. That's not too bad. We can remove, try and remove a bit more of the blue there. Yeah, that's a bit better. So, once you're happy with it, you can keep on going. You can keep adding and removing until the bloody cows come home. And then you click on Keep Changes, and it's going to remove the background and just keep what you see. So it's not too bad. It's pretty hard with photos that look like this, okay, because there's so much detail in them. But it's not too bad at all, I don't think. All right. If you don't like that, we can actually go to remove background and you can click on discard all changes and that's going to remove all the changes and it's going to bring back the entire photo. So clicking on that, it brings back the photo entirely. All right, so that aside, let's move to the next button, which is corrections. All right, brightness, contrast, sharpness. There's three different things you can play with. Here's the sharpness and soften. So it should, well, because it's such a large photo, it's going to take ages for it to preview. In fact, it looks like it's going to crash. So let's do it on the hamster photo. Let's go to corrections. That's softening or blurring, if you want to call it that. That's sharpening. So taking all the pixels and making them look sharper. Brightness and contrast. Uh, to dark. To contrast. To brightness. But, and there's the middle one. So it's entirely up to you which one you use. And there's even more options you can click on down the bottom to change all the different things the sliders, you can change the percentages, you can try the presets here. I'm not going to show you because it's up to you and the photo you're using to try and figure out what's the best setting. Now, color. I'm actually going to use the word logo to demonstrate this guy because he's awesome. If you click on color, you can actually change the entire color of a picture. You can go to black all the way up to really blue. You can try different tones of the same color and you can even recolor the entire thing. How awesome is that? And Word have done such a good job of making it replace colors. I'm even going to go to more variations. And we can go to complete red, complete purple, green. It's not 100% accurate, but Jesus, it's such an easy and quick job. And I have to commend Microsoft for that because it's so bloody good. Again, 
more picture options and the same thing comes up different presets and it's even the same settings so we can go saturation all the way up all the way down and so forth and I'm going to undo that that's color let's go to artistic effects but let's do it on my red bottle bird because some of these look so good click the button you get a heap of preset ones and if you just mouse over them it's going to give you a preview of what it looks like that looks terrible this one looks different however this one this one I absolutely love and I don't know why it just looks like a beautiful painting this one here is not too bad either from memory yeah that's not bad so I would just say mouse over it see what you reckon that one looks interesting what's this one wow that's so cool I am totally keeping that all right that looks awesome but anyway let's say you've changed a whole lot of things about this and you need to remove it that includes all the rest of the options we're about to do here you can actually reset the picture entirely you click on that and it just reverts it back to its original form okay now this change picture button I just quickly skipped over it's literally to move it to another photo so if you've got a different file or a different image from the internet you want to replace it with you just click on that button and it keeps all the formatting so if you've got artistic effects or corrections applied to it it's just going to bring in the new photo with those changes next the borders you can put on a border that's pretty much it it's just it's a border it's some of them have reflections some of them have bevels around the side it's up to you which ones you use okay it's a matter of artistic creation I guess but that's essentially it next you actually have more than that too you can actually click the drop downs or the full drop down and you get even more options there but skipping over that we've got different things over here we've got picture border and picture effects and things like that if I click on picture border it's the color of the picture border so if I choose a color it's going to change this black to an orange yeah and that's pretty much it you can try heaps of different things like the, the size of the line you can try dashed lines it's entirely up to you what you choose okay it depends on your picture and your style the picture effects are pretty interesting in some um, instances you can add shadows reflections which sometimes don't look too bad all right if you ask me that looks all right okay this bevels quite interesting I wouldn't say it's great but it looks interesting sometimes and then finally the 3d rotation could be really really cool but yeah try different things see what works for your photo I'm gonna reset all those changes and go back to normal just like clicking on the reset picture button and then over here we have picture layout which really it's just making sort of a what you call a smart art and we're going to talk about smart art later on play around with it if you'd like to anyway position is literally where do you want to position the photo on the page is it going to be the top left top middle bottom middle bottom right there he is down there middle of the page stuff like that you can just simply one click and it's in the position you want to put it in that's all that position is we've talked about wrap text with all the uh, layout options here and finally let's talk about these things here these bring forward and bring send backward now I'm gonna quickly set my picture to in front of text so these guys I can now move them around freely all right so how do I get mr. hamster on top of red wattle bird that is bring forward and send back up oh, I lost him all right if you ever lose your pictures you can go to the selection pane and actually click on them manually bring them forward and look at that you're all good again all right these options align and rotate align is very similar to position rotate I showed you before it's just quick options of rotating though and you've got even more you can do but anyway I'm not going to go into the details of those because you've got this rotate button which you can grab at any time however the last one I'll show you is mr. crop okay let's move mr. hamster out of the way simply click on this button cropping is sorry I'll explain it cropping is minimizing the size of your photo so not resizing it but actually taking whole chunks out and removing unwanted parts of it so if we click on this crop button it's going to enable the crop mode for that photo and you can see we get these little black 
bars at the corners, which you'd call anchors as well. If you click and drag them, it's not going to resize the photo, but it gives you this dark area. So the, this part is what's going to keep, and this is what it's going to discard. Bring him back down. Oh, let's put him back in the photo. If I move him in like this, okay, and then I'll click the crop button again to finalize my cropping mode. There it is. I'm just left with my little wattle bird. Now bear in mind, it doesn't actually delete the parts that you removed. It just simply hides them for the moment. Now, let's finish up with one little thing here. I'm going to reset the picture. Or not. Let's put my crop back up. Can I just click on... Yep, good enough. And he's back to normal. Now, to, there is one more button I haven't shown you, which is Compress Pictures. Now, right now, this is a massive photo. It is absolutely enormous. I think they're about 7 megabytes each, which is, if you don't know sizes of pictures, that's really, really big. This guy is probably about 0 0.05 of a megabyte, because he's tiny. So what you can do to make your documents smaller, to make them faster, and to send them via email easily, you use Compress Pictures. If you select a photo and click Compress Pictures, you've got to look at all these different options. I want you to pay attention to these options. First of all, is apply only to this pictures. Well, if you only want to compress this photo you have selected, tick that box. But by default, I generally untick that every single time I use this option. Delete cropped areas. Well, you saw before I cropped the red wattle bird, but it actually kept the cropped area. If you keep this ticked, I would not be able to undo my crop after this. And then you've got target output, different types of resolutions. So do you want to be able, is it going to be a print quality? Is it going to be screen quality? Is it going to be email quality? It's entirely up to you which size you use. Now, to demonstrate all of this, I'm going to cancel this. I'm going to save my document inside my Word folder. So I'm going to call it pictures. Okay, and let's quickly go to the documents word all right picture it is currently 2006 kilobytes roughly 2 megabytes okay it says 1.95 megabytes okay now let's do this compressed pictures and see how big this whole thing comes out let's go to print quality untick that and go okay all right resave okay it slightly reduced it, okay? It went down 0 0.01 of a megabyte. Okay, let's try and compress it further. Let's go to email. Let's see how much of a difference that makes. Save. 313 kilobytes. 0.3 of a megabyte, basically. Okay, that's tiny. I'd suggest you get to know that and get to love that command because it's brilliant when you're working with large documents with lots and lots of photos. That's it for today, everybody. I hope you enjoyed some other things and I learnt something. Like, comment, subscribe down the bottom. I'd love to hear what you have to say about them. Anyway, I'd love to see you in the next video. Catch you then.